Well, hello, long time no chat. I still do videos, I still read books, and I've read some books this year. And I thought we could do a quarter one wrap up. So January, February, March, that's quarter one. It is April, what is time, who knows. Beginning of the year was kind of shit, like personally, um, which translated into the beginning of the reading year, not being shit exactly, but being weird. So what I read in <laughs> the first quarter of the year, is not super reflective of what I normally read for like life reasons. So anyway, um, basically TLDR, um, I was reading things that like didn't require much of me or wouldn't like trigger other anxieties that I was having for me. Um, I mostly was reading things that I could get through in like a single day or a single sitting. Um, it's kind of the vibe. And then of course, you know, like I read books for patrons every month and um, for every quarter for Blades of Bodice Rippers and Kaz is attacking her own tail. Great timing, my love. Anyway, so yeah. Um, I also, I don't, I have physical copies of quite a few, but quite a few I don't because I was getting a bunch of stuff from the library. Aside from books that I read for like um, vlog project type of stuff that I don't include ever in wrap ups until after that project is complete. Um, I've read 21 books so far this year. I haven't quite finished my eighth read of The Wolf or my 17th read of Ella Enchanted. So they can't actually be considered for or included in this wrap up, but that as well, <laughs> nearly. But okay, um, the beginning of the year, almost back to back, not actually back to back. We'll do them all together. Um, stay, stay, stay. So technically there's like one book in between right here. So we'll just take that one out and do it next. Um, I read the Once, a Bro Once, a Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy by Stephanie Garber uh, on no one's bingo card for me to be reading ever, including mine. I, to this day, do not, re like, okay, be okay. The, the reason for this, I had never in my life desired to read these books or really was interested in this author. This is not my scene. And it m remains not my scene, but I read all three books. So this cover I hadn't seen before. I'd only seen the US covers. This is the UK slash specifically, I want to say Waterstones, or maybe it was just the UK. I don't know. Um, no, okay, well, this is, is signed, which I'm not sure that I was aware of. Oh, this is the Vault edition. Oh yeah, because these all have um, naked covers that are like different, and I guess they have different symbols on them. I have hearts on mine. I don't know what the other options were. Anyway, I saw in someone's vlog them reading it, but reading this copy. And I will not name names, but it was, it's somebody that I watch now and again, who I, I don't actually really like their videos that much. And I also almost never agree with them about books. Like I don't go to them for taste either. Um, so I can't really explain why I watch them any better than I can explain why I read these, read these books. But anyway, they had this copy that they were reading and I was like, I just love this, the look of this book. And in that vlog, this person wasn't like in love with this book. They thought it was like fine. So they weren't even like getting me hyped for it or anything. They weren't like, this is the best book ever. This is so good, ah, like, and no, they were like, it's okay. Like it's it's pretty good, it's decent uh, for like YA fantasy, it's, it's okay. Um, and, but I was just like, gotta have it, gotta have it, gotta have it, this edition. I tracked it down and the rest of the trilogy and got the set. <laughs> from, I think I got them on Pango Books or possibly Mercari, I don't know, um, for a stupid amount of money. Like it was the cheapest that I saw anywhere. So like it was a decent, I, I could sell them all for more than I paid, but I still paid a stupid amount. Anyway, so I read these books almost back to back and I do not recommend them. I gave them all three stars, even though they're probably deserving of one star each because there is nothing really about them that's good except for the covers, which genuinely bring me joy continue to bring me joy. Every time I look at these covers on my shelf, I'm like, you're so beautiful. That something about the colors is just so deeply satisfying to me. I don't care that I didn't really think these books are good. And I still like, I, I guess the only word for how I felt reading them was that I did enjoy the experience, but I, I don't know how, like what other word to apply. I've never felt the way that I did reading these books. The best I can do is, is say that I, it was like the experience of like 
role-playing, cosplaying the type of person that would enjoy these books. I was like, what if I just turned off my brain and every time the book did something that I would normally be like, this makes no sense. This is stupid. This is ridiculous. This is a great example of bad writing. This is why you should never do this in a book. How can people like this? Every single time the book did that, which was very, very often, I was like, what if I just kind of like watched that thought and waved at it as it passed by and didn't engage with it and just read these books like, I see no, no problems here, tra-la-la, tra-la-la. Yeah, they're not good. They're truly not good. Not even in like a, this is so bad, but you know, it's like trashy good fun. It's not trashy good fun. It's not even like wildly entertaining nonsense. It's pretty boring and mid. <laughs> there's, I, there's nothing redeeming about these books except for their covers. If you love these books, I'm really happy for you. Like, it's fine. You can like them. You can like what you like. Yeah, they're not good. I just really like these covers. And for whatever reason, I just chewed through them all and I don't regret the experience, but I don't think I'll ever understand why I did it. But anyway, that happened. So then um, in the middle there, don't fall down, don't fall down. I read um, City of Last Chances by Adrian Tchaikovsky with my patrons for our buddy read, not for the vlog because I also do a vlog. And yeah, this is the first book in this series. What was the name of the series? The Tyrant Philosophers. And I was pretty disappointed in this. I've heard the second one is like much better and that I would probably like things that I didn't like about this. I would like the second one better. I might read it. I don't know. I love the covers, the style of the covers of the series. Basically, I felt like this had a s so very, very much potential. There are so many things in this book that conceptually are absolutely my cup of tea. And not only my cup of tea, but like this specific type of scenario being proposed by the author is very, very interesting and, and has the potential to be like a fantastic basis on which to write the story. But I felt like one, it did too many things in one book. So we couldn't actually devote any time to actually like properly examining, engaging with any one of those ideas. So it was like looking at a menu of fun options and not actually getting to order anything. And then, I mean, that was the main problem, honestly. And then, well, I guess the things that it was engaging with, I feel like are quite similar to a lot of what is, the story is quite different. I don't want to give you the, a wrong impression, but there are a lot of similarities to, Cass, can we not? You're so cute, but please don't. That's, no, that's not for you. Okay, bye-bye. To the Age of Madness trilogy by Joe Abercrombie, the third, the second trilogy, the third set of three in the world of the first law. So a little hatred, it's trouble with peace, and the last argument, uh, wisdom of crowds. And in particular, wisdom of crowds is where I feel like there's similarity to some stuff in here. Um, you've got the sort of like revolution in a city populist uprising thing going on in a speculative scenario with like a lot of politics and machinations, etc. More magical because Adrian Tchaikovsky is more into more magic and Joe Abercrombie is on the lowest of low ends of magic. Like the like when people say low magic, like Joe Abercrombie is like barely any magic. But I just feel like Joe Abercrombie, he kind of like spent the entire trilogy, uh, that trilogy, developing some of the ideas that are kind of like shoved in here alongside 50 other things in one book and we kind of like go through the arc in that is explored in that whole trilogy in like a quarter of this one book. So it's just too fast and you can't properly engage with it. So I just kind of felt really unsatisfied reading this. I was like, there's just like so much good stuff in here and it's like all going to waste because we can't actually like chew on any of it. So again, I've heard the second book is better both in general and also like given my criticisms specifically that people said, well, the second book for you in particular would work better. So I might read it. I don't know, but yeah, that's how I feel about this. Stunning cover though. Then what did I read next? Hexwood for um, Blades and Bodice Rippers. It was my pick. So the live show was on my channel uh, by Diana Wynne Jones, who is the author of Howl's Moving Castle. Uh, Hexwood is much, much more, um, much, much less known, less well known, um, to the point where this is out of print, I think, or almost out of print. Um, or it might be print on demand. And like, I didn't know it was so hard to find when I chose it. So I felt a little bad about that. 
because um, I just already had this book and Diana Wynne Jones is a pretty well-known author so I, it didn't occur to me that this would be hard to come by. Anyway, um, this book was dedicated to Neil Gaiman by Diana Wynne Jones which was like a huge part of my interest in it. But yeah, we talked about it in the live. We all felt kind of mixed about it. It has like, it's a kind of chaotic and strange book that you kind of have to be willing to go with. If you like Terry Pratchett, if you like Doctor Who, if you like um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, if you like that kind of like absurdist chaotic Britishness, then you probably do quite well with Hexwood. But it's certainly not for everyone. So anyway, I'm glad I read it. I don't think everyone felt that way. Then uh, I did next read The Dragon Bone Chair by Tad Williams for my vlog for my patrons. Um, they Meaning they chose it for me to read if you have forgotten. I've forgotten at this point. And I, what did I think about this? It wasn't very memorable. I think I thought that it was quite mid. Did I write a review for it? It'd be great if I did. But clearly it's um not a memorable book. I feel like there was something specifically that annoyed me. Ooh, I did write a review. Ugh. I was being all cryptic because I'm like, you have to watch my vlog to know what I thought about it. Well, I pers I have to go watch my own vlog to know what I thought about it. I just said, I can see why they chose it for me, but dot, dot, dot. Well, God damn it, past Liana, future Liana doesn't know what you meant by that. So let's see. Yeah, I think I thought that it just wasn't... Okay, yeah, it's coming back to me. Characters I thought were not well done at all. And I think I thought that the politics of it was actually like quite simple but acting like it was complicated. I feel like that was my my th my thought about it. Um oh and I think I thought that the main character who's like that's what could kind of get you invested in this is if you were really like interested in the main oh I thought yeah the main character wasn't very consistent in his characterization. He just was like whatever that type of character would need to be in a given part of the story because like that's what this like hero's journey arc is about because this is the part of the story where they develop courage. This is the part of the story where they like it just didn't feel like this is a character that's genuinely going through these changes. They're just like going through the proper like checkpoint motions of like what the story needs them to be. So it never felt realistic or consistent or consistent within them as a character or for the story it didn't feel believable that they would behave in these ways. It was just like, well, this is the part where this type of character does this thing. And this is the part where the t this type of character would react this way because that's how the story has to go, you know? So yeah, I felt it was kind of not very well done. I think I thought that the prose was good. Yeah, I think I thought that the prose was good enough to where if you were kind of not paying attention, you'd be like, this feels like it's probably pretty good. But then like, if you actually like looked at the politics of the story and the characterization or lack thereof, it's actually like, there's not that much there underpinning this. So yeah. And then it had like a cliffhanger ending that I saw coming and I did not feel interested in going on to read more. So yeah, I was quite disappointed because I think this was my first Tad Williams. I own a different Tad Williams that I had purchased a long time ago because Patrick Rothfuss recommended it. Um, and the prose being good, I can see why he'd be into it. The book that I have from Tad Williams that I had originally intended to read first and have not um, is, I think it's to do with boats or something. The Dirty Streets of Heaven? So not boats. <laughs> uh, anywho, I haven't read it, but that's the that was that book specifically that I got from Rothfuss as a recommendation. So maybe I would really like that book. I don't know. Prose was pretty good in this. I, I definitely enjoyed the prose more for this than like say my attempt to read The Eye of the World. So yeah, this wasn't it for me. Then um, a book that I've definitely talked about on the channel. Um, you should have seen the video. Although I was pretty cryptic, cryptic about what book it was in the thumbnail, but I'm, sh I'm sure you clicked on the video so you know. Um, that is Shakespeare Was a Woman and Other Heresies, How Doubting the Bard Became the Biggest Taboo in Literature by Elizabeth Winkler. This is nonfiction about the Shakespeare authorship question. And this is gonna go down to be one of my favorite books of the year. On the thumbnail, if you're confused and you're like, no, I haven't seen that you did a video on this. I just blurted it out and I said, this is the best thriller that I've ever read because it reads like a thriller. It's nonfiction. Um, but it's Elizabeth Winkler kind of like tracking down this question and talking to people and it's just like really taboo questions that people are trying to warn her off from t like asking about it. And it's, it's this really contentious topic, which seems ridiculous because it's like, who cares? Like, why are you not allowed to ask about this? Um, there's just like so much wrapped up in it. So many people who have kind of like their reputations and identities wrapped up in this question. Um, so just like the macro of like, how did it get to be such a big deal to even ask that question as well as the specifics of like, okay, but like, it seems like there's pretty good reason to actually be asking this question. So then, and if not, you know, this man from Stratford called William Shakespeare, then who? 
it's just this like amazing multi-layered like so complicated and and like historically and anthropologically culturally politically interesting misery and elizabeth winkler's authorial voice is so compelling and readable. I was just like chewing through it. Like it was a page turner. I couldn't get enough. I read it so fast. I was like, this is so good. So anyway, I highly recommend. Whether you give a shit about Shakespeare or not, I recommend. Next, I read a book uh, that I got from the library um, and that was The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. Again, I saw in some video someone get hyped about it. Um, I think I had read Riley Sager before. Yeah, I definitely did. I read the one with the green cover. Um, Home Before Dark. I didn't really like it, but everyone always loves Riley Sager. I shouldn't say everyone, but he's a quite popular author. So anyway, this person loves this one and I was like, all right, give it a go. And credit where it's due for a, a big chunk of the book, the certainly the first half of it, I was like, yeah, this is like really compelling and page turning. Like I'm, it's very atmospheric. It's very like moody. Like I'm, I'm definite page turner flying through this one to know what's going to happen. And I think the person who really liked it had said that like, it's unpopular, it's an unpopular opinion to really love this one, that a lot of people take issue with kind of the twist in it or the ending in it. And they were like, I like it, but a lot of people really don't like that. So I was very curious to see what that twist would be because I was like, well, so far, so great. Very like, credit where it's due. Like, this is kind of unputdownable. And then the twist happened and it was, I was not prepared. It was truly the most ridiculous. I, what? <laughs> No, uh, no, absolutely not. That was ridiculous. So yeah, credit where it's due, it is like talented writing to make the like getting there, the setup and the premise and the you know scene to scene to feel so kind of like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And I feel the, like tense and I feel interested and curious. I think it's like good writing like in that sort of sense. But like the, the plot, like where this goes, <laughs> what the answer to what's going on is, is truly one of the most ridiculous things I've ever read in my entire life. Uh, zero out of 10, do not recommend. Uh, next I read The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, which is the second book in the Inheritance Games trilogy. I've started reading Final Gambit. I would like to finish that series this year. Final Gambit and then, I don't actually know like where the Brothers Hawthorne sits, if it's a prequel or a sequel or what. I have all four, but anyway. Um, this felt very much like a middle book. The first book was a very page turny fun book that isn't like quality, but like just a very good time for me anyway. The premise is that some like poor-ish, I guess it's a properly poor uh, girl finds out that like some mega billionaire has died and like left her randomly his um, wealth, his house and everything. But there's a catch where she has to like stay in the house for a year. And there's like a puzzle mystery to be unearthed like in the house. And it's like a competition to actually win the inheritance between her and his act, his like blood relative heirs, his uh, grandsons slash nephews or just grandsons. I don't know. But so it's like the boys and her trying to figure out like the clues left behind in this big mansion house, this like uber billionaire. So it's like a fun time. Uh, it reminded me of like the Westing game, which I loved when I was a kid, um, or like the Knives Out house, but like on crack because it's like a billionaire. So like it was like silly, but it was like anyway, every chapter ends on a cliffhanger kind of thing. So anyway, this is the second book and uh, of what I believe is a trilogy. Again, I don't know exactly what the Brothers Hawthorne is. I have it, but I think it's a trilogy. Like this mystery will wrap up in the next book. This just feels like a way to stretch it into three books because like nothing really like happens in here. There's like a couple kind of reveal type things to get you through, but it's like it's here to like pad the runtime is what it feels like. So like it wasn't a terrible time, but it felt very much like we're kind of like treading water until we can like wrap things up in the final gambit. So I'm looking forward to having this wrapped up because it seems to me this is probably going to have been a duology or even a standalone. <laughs> but anyway. I'm having a decent time. Oh yes, I also talked about this. Uh, next, I read Argyle by Ellie Conway, which isn't actually written by Ellie Conway because there's no such person as Ellie Conway. Spoilers for my video on Argyle. I read it because I saw the trailer for the movie and I was like, oh, it's based on a book. The book sounds really interesting. Like, I'm gonna go read the book and then see the movie. And I did that, which ended up being much more of a chaotic and confusing situation than I really realized. And Argyle, the book, is terrible really really bad and there's kind of a reason for that which i talked about in that video but um i felt very um tricked so do not recommend uh, next i read happy place by emily henry and i think that the 
World's Strategic Pink Reserve was um, expended on this book. I loved Beach Read and read that when it came out. And then after that, I read, like I picked up a bunch of her backlist, which was YA. She's now written quite a few adult books, but at the time it was all just like the YA, YA books and I haven't liked any of those. And then she wrote another adult book. So I tried, I was like, okay, so I guess that's where it's at. So I did, I read People We Meet on Vacation. Eh, better than the young adult stuff, but I didn't like it very much. So I was like, okay, I guess Beach Read, one hit wonder, like that's it. But I got, I got this one a while ago. I think someone gifted it to me. I, I don't really give up on authors if they did something right at one time. This I really, really liked. I still like Beach Read slightly more. But this was like, we're back, baby. I was like, this is what I wanted. This is what I thought all of your books would be. This was giving me more what Beach Read gave me, where like, I felt very invested in these characters and it wasn't, you know, it's not just like a rom-com, you know, it's it's kind of like serious life issues, more lit ficky, where I feel very seen and very um, represented by kind of some of the emotional issues and baggage and and like the friendships and the everything that's in it. I was just like, yes, this, this is it. This is what I want from Emily Henry. So I, I think I gave this five stars. I probably was like, oh, should I? And then I was like, fuck it. This was, I couldn't put this down. I didn't want it to end. So yeah, if you liked Beach Read, I do think you'd like Happy Place. Definitely much, much better than People We Meet on Vacation. I really liked this. <laughs> Next, I read Caliban's War by James S.A. Corey, which is actually, what's it, Daniel Abraham and someone else? For the writing duo. This is the second book in The Expanse and I really really liked it. Um, I plan to read more of The Expanse this year. I read the first book in The Expanse last year as part of like a vlog project and I started watching the show after reading this and I'm definitely enjoying the show more now having read because I tried one episode of the show a while ago before I'd ever read any of the books and wasn't a fan but having read a couple of the books the show is a lot more interesting to me because I kind of know these characters from the books and I'm more interested in seeing them in the show because I think the show is not paced especially well. But if I, I kind of already know from the books, then I find myself much more interested, weirdly, even though I already know what's going to happen. I don't know. I really enjoy this. I think I probably like this slightly more. Cassie, no! Okay. Kaz knocked over my LaCroix. Yeah, you did. Don't look at me like that. You're so cute. Where was I? Oh yeah, Caliban's War. Um, yeah, I think I like this better than Leviathan Wakes. And I, I did really like Leviathan Wakes. But now it's been a minute. Now I'm like mixing the show with this. Oh yeah, there's a character that I think it's already in the show, but it was she wasn't in the first book. But they put her into the beginning of the story. What's her name? She was interesting. I liked meeting her. Something with an, oh yeah, Avasarala. Yeah, yeah, no, I really, really enjoyed this. I'm enjoying the series. I think I've heard people say there's kind of like a lull in series and comes back up again, which in such a long series is to be expected. But yeah, this is just like good, like fun adventure sci-fi space opera stuff. Like interesting politics, lots of interesting characters. I feel immersed and interested and playing with some interesting concept, take some twists and turns that I don't expect. Like it's not, you know, like breaking the mold or anything, but it's like, it's very good. I can see why this series is so popular. So yeah. Looking forward to reading what's next. Abaddon's Gate. Yeah. Just think it's a good time. If you like sci-fi, I think this is good. Next, I, oh yeah. <laughs> next, I read For My Patrons because you see the patron vlog is, so the way that I do it is where like um, higher tiers of patrons get to like suggest books and then um, everybody gets to vote on which book I actually read and then I vlog the book, uh, me reading the book. Um, I know, super complicated. No one's ever done it that way before. But Patreon, the like app or whatever, it's really stupid. Um, and when I, when you're creating a poll, if you like, it has like automatically two entries and then you can, you know, add more, add more, add more. But if you accidentally add an extra one, you can't delete it. <laughs> so, Okay, this has happened a couple of times where I've like accidentally added an extra option um, where I can't delete it. And then like, that's what I write in the option. I'm like, well, I can't delete this one. Like, that's why this is here. This isn't a real option. So that happened again, where I, I were like, I can't delete this one because Patreon is dumb. And I can't delete this one because Patreon is dumb, won the poll. And so I read Fourth Wing. Oh, <laughs> uh, cause I thought that would be funny. <laughs> and um, yeah. It was, uh, it was funny. Um, 
pretty long vlog, one of my longer ones, because I kind of like talked about more, you know, specifics and nitpicks because I figured that's kind of what people would want from me. I'd had food poisoning directly before reading this. It was an interesting time. So yeah, I read Fourth Wing and um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, next, then I read another thriller that I got from the library, um, The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. And I did not like this either. I liked it at first, kind of like with um, not nearly as bad of a twist as um, The House Across the Lake, but kind of like with that where I was like, to start out with, I was interested, engrossed, it seemed like a good premise, good setting. And then where it ends up going, I was like, this doesn't make a lot of sense. It makes very, very little sense. And it just like, it beggars belief to a point where like, I can't find it interesting or be like, oh, what a twist, because I'm like, that's ridiculous. Like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, I was pretty disappointed. Especially because in the past, I've quite liked Lucy Foley books. Um, the first of hers I read, I think, was The Guest List. Um, I liked that. What else have I read by her? I read The Guest... Oh, yeah, The Hunting Party. I didn't like that as much as The Guest List, but it was pretty good. I liked the, it better than The Paris Apartment. Is that it? That might be it. So yeah, it's definitely the least good Lucy Foley book that I've read. Not as bad as the Riley Sager one. And then next for my patron buddy read, I'll be last year we read The Wizard of Earthsea in December, I think. And I'd kind of hoped it would be a read along, but I think I'm going to stop here. Um, but we read The Tombs of Atuan um, by Ursula Le Guin or Ursula K. Le Guin. And my feeling with this and with The Wizard of Earthsea is that, I mean, these walked so a lot of other books could run. I just don't enjoy reading it because there's so much better, like so many better books that have come later. They kind of owe a lot of what they ha they are to Ursula K. Le Guin doing this first. But so like with Wizard of Earthsea, like I enjoyed that one more than this one. This I liked a lot less than this one did some things where I was like, this doesn't make sense. And the thing about this that would be interesting is the thing that it's not bothering to explore. So why am I reading this? I was quite irritated. <laughs> but like The Wizard of Earthsea, I thought it was pretty good. But it was very kind of arm's length and surface level. And it was telling the type of story that like Robin Hobb would tell. But The Wizard of Earthsea, you know, is like short, just like this. And the story that it tells, Robin Hobb would take an entire trilogy to tell. And she would do this like mega deep dive into the psychology of each of the characters. And that's kind of what I'd be more interested in. And so like The Wizard of Earthsea felt kind of like so, like a, a, an outline that Robin Hobb would write for her trilogy. And so it, it was a good story, one that I'd be interested in. It just felt like we never got to like get into it. So I was like, I, I mean, I see why this kind of like changed the fantasy landscape and why it is regarded as a classic. But yeah, Tombs of Atuan, like I said, I was pretty annoyed at what it cho chose to focus on and chose not to focus on and how it handled a certain aspect of it. I was like, what? <laughs> so yeah, I'm disappointed because I own them all in these pretty editions. And I want this to be a favorite series of mine because it's so classic and well regarded, etc. But it's just, it's not, honestly. So anyway, I'm disappointed. The next I read Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, which I liked better than The House of... No, nothing will ever be as stupid as House Across the Lake. Truly baffling. Um, but Lock Every Door was a lot like The Paris Apartment, where the premise to begin with is really, really good actually more like House Across the Lake, where the beginning is really, really good. The setting, exactly what I would want. It feels mysterious and interesting. The characters are compelling. I am really, you know, I'm. it's very page turning. Not as page turning as House, House Across the Lake, I have to say. I was disappointed in that, that I wasn't like, ooh, like what's going to happen next? But it was good. I, I was enjoying it. And then the revelation of what's going on and what's been going on and what the mystery is was ridiculous. Um... So I just, I couldn't enjoy it. I couldn't find it to be an engaging twist because it was just so bonkers. Um, and then it gets wrapped up in a, just a ridiculous and aggressively dramatic way. And I, at that, I was like, just trying to get through it at that point. I was like, okay, well, this is stupid. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I'm done with Riley's anchor. <laughs> or maybe I'll try again. Who knows? Uh, next, I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder um, by Holly Jackson, which is the first book in a series. But I was pleasantly surprised that well, some part of the mystery remains to be told in the future. I think it's a trilogy as well. But 
like a big central mystery to that book does get wrapped up in the first book, which I was after reading Truly Devious and not finishing yet the Inheritance Games and I think some others. I don't know, but I'm just kind of used to them kind of like dragging it out and stretching it. So while the there's a carryover from this original mystery that is like, I'm assuming what the next book's going to be about, like we get solid satisfaction of murder, uh, murder of murder mystery resolution in the first book. Um, and actually, so I got that from the library, but um, I went ahead and ordered the special edition because it's just, I didn't actually like the book that much, but this edition is so freaking cool. The pages, the, I mean, the sprayed pages, like I, this is so awesome. The end pages. So like, I think it's pretty good. I don't think it's like breaking the mold. So I think it's better than Truly Devious in terms of like the mystery and the, the fact that it does wrap up a big part of it in the first book is more satisfying. I just like being in the world of Truly Devious better. So like, I think in some wibbly wobbly objective sense, if there is such a thing, this is better than Truly Devious. But Truly Devious, I just like escaping into this like ridiculous, unrealistic boarding school setting where they are in Truly Devious. And then the flashbacks to like the old timey um, timeline. Like I just, being transported to that setting is more appealing to me than this much more mundane setting. But I think this is a better mystery and a better execution of a mystery plot for a YA book, if that makes sense. So I think it's better, but I like Truly Devious better. <laughs> Anyway, I'm definitely going to read the next books in the series, and I've ordered the editions to match because of course. Next I read Le Mort d'Artour by Sir Thomas Mallory, which I've had for a long time and never read it before, which is kind of the not, there is no like one single Genesis point, but it's kind of the, the first sort of proper um, canonization of the King Arthur legend story. I really kind of hate King Arthur. I never, that's why I haven't, hadn't read it before. And hadn't read any Arthur story before, by which I mean any of the kind of like original traditional classic Arthur stories, because I just it's never appealed to me. Um, I'm a Robin Hood girly, not that you have to be one or the other, but like of these old timey England legend slash history type figures, Robin Hood, I'm like, yeah, King Arthur, I was like, I don't get the appeal. But I'd never actually read the original story. And having read it, I feel like even less kindly disposed towards it. I was like, I never really liked it when I just kind of had this bare kind of sketched outline of what King Arthur is. The bare bones of kind of like vaguely the, the beats of the story. Having um sort of properly read it now, like, oh my God, fuck King Arthur. <laughs> this story, I do not understand why it's like, has the, you know, the imagination and nationhood like of England in its grip. Like, I just, <laughs> what? So anyway, there's a reason I read this that I'm not saying yet right now. But anyway, for the same reason that I read this, I read, reread By Force Alone by Lavi Tadar. This is, I read this when it came out. And um, at the time I was like, I think I would get even more out of this if I was more familiar with King Arthur. And now reading, uh, Mallory's La Mort d'Artour right before rereading this, I was like, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, there's even more here. Um, I love this even more. The first time I read it, I was like, I think this is brilliant, but it was super weird and I don't know that much about Arthur. I think it's brilliant though. <laughs> and rereading it, one, I was prepared for how weird it is because this, you know, is a reread. So like, I'm not like, what the fuck? I'm like, I know it's going to be a pretty massive what the fuck. But also then I could actually kind of more engage with or, or identify all the places he's messing with Arthur and intentionally kind of satirizing parts of Arthur that kind of the first time. I love this. And I also love the fact that this is written by somebody who also fucking hates King Arthur. <laughs> this is not written from a place of like a scholar that is like, it's not coming from reverence or admiration or obsession. Like this is not somebody who's like knows the Arthur story intimately and kind of wants to kind of mess with it or do a twist on it. He hates the King Arthur story, despises. And it's like, if you're going to read this, like know that going into it, if you are a big fan of Arthur or even kind of like Arthur, he doesn't. <laughs> it's not treating it kindly or reverently or anything. And then also it's kind of like bananas in a, it, kind of the speculative elements and the tone that it takes with it, um, which I really, really enjoy. I think it's brilliant. But it's a weird one. And again, there's a reason that I read this and well, re read that and reread this, which stay tuned for that. Uh, next, I read Rouge by Mona Awad. 
and I was disappointed because it really did not stick the landing in my opinion. I thought when I started it that I was like, oh, this is even better than Bunny. And I really liked Bunny, but I was like, ooh, this is like a step up from that. Like the writing in, and I maintain the writing in Rouge is better than Bunny. And so like for the, like at least 50% to 75% of the book, I was like, this is really good. I'm probably gonna give this five stars, four minimum. And then it truly completely fumbles the landing in my opinion. To the point where I was like, oh, this is barely a three stars. Like, I kind of wish it just kind of randomly cut off in a midpoint with an utter, utterly open, non-conclusive ending <laughs> would have been better. I would have given it four stars. But it like wraps things up in a way that is like, isn't good, isn't, it's not satisfying because it's like too satisfying. It's like this suddenly this like neat, let's explain everything and none of the explanations are good, but let's go through the motions of explaining everything and wrapping everything up and... Like, I don't know what meaning I was supposed to derive from the ending, or if the point of it is that there is no point, then stop putting a bow on it. Like, I just, it completely lost me on the ending. But like 75% of it, I think is so good and so interesting. And I couldn't, I was like, I kind of couldn't wait to see where this would then wrap up. I was like, where is she going with this? Like, what is ultimately going to have been the point of this? Um, and well... Anyway, the journey was much better than the destination. <laughs> and last, aside from my current re 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 read of The Wolf and Ella Enchanted, um, I read for my patrons, they chose for me to read and vlog, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. And um, I, uh, let me put it this way, I think Fourth Wing is a much better book. And that's all I have to say about that. So yeah, that's a wrap up of quarter one. Kaz, what are you doing? That's a wrap up of quarter one. Um, hope you're well. I'm decently well. I'll be back soon-ish with another video. I have several in mind. It's a matter of sitting down to film them. <laughs> Just a little tricky these days, but we'll, we will get it done. And yeah, let me know if you've read these books, if you want to read these books, if I've convinced you to or to not read these books. The usual, whatever you want, let me know. I post videos dot 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 <laughs> sometimes um so yeah see you when i see you bye